Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. We're going to have a look at this homologous series, which is brand new to us at Advanced Higher Chemistry. It's just a short video today. SQA page 91. We're going to have a look at what ethers are. We're going to have a look at... Let me let me write the learning outcomes out, like pretend that I'm professional. Okay, so we're going to look at the structure first of all. Typical structure of an ether. Well, I call it a, I call it a carbon-oxygen sandwich because basically... The structural recognition, the feature that all ethers have, is they have to, carbon bonded to an oxygen bonded to a carbon again. You can regard them... The, the, the SQA says you can regard them as substituted alkanes. I sort of disagree with them. I tend to regard them as substituted water. It's a bit like a water molecule where you've knocked these H's off and replaced them with carbons in the same way as we did for the amines. If you haven't seen the amines video, I'll try and put a link up here yet. It's the other weird and new homologous series to us. So that's a typical um, structure. Let's have a look at how you would actually make this. Well, I'm actually going to chicken out here because uh, the making belongs in the nucleophilic substitution video, which at the time of recording this, I haven't made yet. But if I have uh, a memory that's half working, I'll put a link up to this here now. Basically, uh, the quick version is you need to take an alcohol... So, for example, methanol, cook it up with um, a group one metal. And what that does is strip the hydrogen off here and you're left with what's called an alkoxide ion. I, I'm actually telling you the answer to this. I'm probably going to repeat myself in this other video, but whatever. It's all good. Twice is better than nothing. So you'll form um, that and you'll form sodium hydroxide and you'll also form hydrogen gas. So this is a nucleophile, which you can then react with a bromo or a halogeno alkane. So if we had, say, chloromethane, this will come rushing in, knock your chlorine off, and that will stick directly onto the carbon, and you'll end up making, well, you'll end up making that, basically. So that's how we form them, naming them. When it comes to naming... Ethers are regarded as being substituted alkanes. So that's probably why the SQ are calling them that. Fair enough. So they're a bit like substituted alkanes. Let me explain what I mean on a fresh sheet of paper. If we have a look at this member of the ether family here, you would see it two carbons, oxygen, three carbons. And the naming system is basically Z substituted alkanes. So what we do is we look for the longest chain of carbon atoms, uh, which, of course, is that. And basically, this is propane, regarded as propane, with a hanger-on, a substituent, in the form of this. So I did say these were called alkoxy ions. So this is one, two carbons. So this is ethoxy, propane, basically. And because it's stuck onto the first carbon in the chain, this is one ethoxy propane. So that's how you do the naming, guys. Please note that we we find the largest chain and use that as our base. So I suppose you could regard it as the other way around. You could regard it as like propoxy ethane, only you don't, because that's wrong. That's why we don't do it that way. So find the longest chain. So this is a small group with the oxygen, bigger carbon chain uh, as just the alkane. I did say I would do naming and uses. Can I just check I haven't missed anything out from the SQA yet? Oh yes, I'm an idiot. Physical properties. Um, you are required to know the melting and boiling point tendencies. You're also required to know solubility. Uh, melting and boiling point is easy to explain. If you have a look at... Oh, by the way, one last thing. I'm glad I didn't go any further. These are isomers of alcohols. Ethers as are isomeric with the alcohol family. Let's just check. I'm not telling you porky pies. So if you have the simplest ether there, and we compare that to a two-carbon alcohol. If I've done my arithmetic correctly, they are both C3H6O. Uh, and I know you normally show that as C C3. Goodness me, hey. C2H6O. I know you'd normally show it as C2H5OH, but that's for that version. So if they're being sneaky, be wary of formula like that. It could be an alcohol, could be an ether, but there is an easy way to tell. Uh, just like the amine family, we're going to haunt you with something from higher. 
this is delta minus, this is delta plus. So alcohols have hydrogen bonding between their molecules and these have very high melting and boiling points. So high melting points and boiling points. Whereas these guys here, they do not have any, they have oxygen and they have hydrogen, but they're not attached together. So therefore you don't get that large delta in electronegativity and these have no hydrogen bonding. So as a result, the melting and boiling points of ethers are low when compared to the isomeric alcohol, which are high for the alcohol here. Glad I mentioned that. Solubility, provided you've got nice small ethers like this, they will happily dissolve in water. When you extend the carbon chain though, like you're probably pushing your luck with this one here, um, that's because of increased non-polar chains here. Don't really want to mix with the water and the solubility falls off with larger carbon chains. So melting boiling points of ethers are lower than the corresponding isomeric alcohol due to a lack of hydrogen bonding and solubility is fine for small ones, small being short carbon chains. Uses. Uh, uses won't take as long. They are chemically very unreactive. In fact, that is a dead giveaway. For C2H6O, unknown compound, you find it has a nice low boiling point and is chemically unreactive, is the famous phrase. It's not an alcohol, that's for damn sure, because they are very handy. Whereas ethers are chemically unre unreactive. Do you know what they're really good for, though, in the real world? Because they don't react with things, they're really good as solvents. If you pursue chemistry later on, you'll probably find that we tend to use them a lot for dissolving stuff. They also have a really nasty uh, tendency to form explosives as they get really old. Um, but that is not in our course. Go and look up ether hydroperoxide if you're interested. That will probably put you on a government watch list, of course. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.